This will be my spoiler review and recap of episode four of Wheel of Time season two, titled Daughter of the Night. I'm gonna recap the episode. I will break down what I liked, what I did not like, and then I will give a score for the episode. So join me today for my review of episode four of season two of the Wheel of Time titled Daughter of the Night. So let's just go ahead and jump right on into the recap of episode four, because this one caused some feelings. Kicking off the episode, we have a clip of a Shamael presumably freeing Lanfear from her prison. Now we find out later that this was for sure her, but the fact that he said her name while he was doing it was kind of a giveaway. But let's jump into Moraine's plot line first. Moraine returns to Kyrian and visits her sister's home, which happens to be her former family's home. There was some drama about 20 years past that all of the book readers will know her uncle started a war with the Aiel, but that is not really explained in the episode, just that there was some drama and that their family was ruined. Moraine's sister is none other than Lady Anavere, who we met last week at the party with Rand and Selene. Now Moraine somewhat blows off interactions with her sister, getting right to work scouring the city trying to find Rand. She visits Loghain, visits the Foregate, and talks to the guard that's been letting Rand in to go to work. And then finally, her sister forces her to talk with her because all of the people that Moraine's been running around talking to are now loyal to her sister, Anavere, and she offers to help Moraine, but only if she will have tea with her. Lan is now hanging out with Alana and her warders at what appears to be Alana's family home. I guess I was gathering that. Lan spends some time trying to figure out what he's going to do next, and he spends time talking to Alana and Maskim and Ivan. Maskim ends up finding the poem that Lan had stolen from Moraine at the end of the other episode, and successfully garners from that that Lan fears been released. She let, he lets Alana know, and then Alana, Ivan, and Maskim all wonder what Lan is going to do next, knowing that Lanfear is free. In the tower, Nynaeve is predictably distraught over the events of the Arches from the previous episode. I suppose losing your entire family, including your daughter, would be somewhat traumatic. She's now unaccepted, though, and she's very, very distant, though, from Egwene and very obviously in grief, as you would expect. Leandrin comforts Nynaeve in a surprisingly tender moment in the episode. They share about a lot of things, including Leandrin sharing about her son and the struggle of outliving everybody that you know. Leandrin then can confides or perhaps manipulates Nynaeve by telling her that Perrin and Loyal have been taken by the Shan Chan invaders in Falm. Nynaeve predictably wants to go in and save the day, so she goes to Egwene and tells her that she is leaving to go there after them, and Egwene, of course, says she is coming too. Now, Elaine ends up following them and tagging along herself. When they arrive to meet Leandrin, Leandrin calls Elaine a complication, clearly not expecting her to show up, and then uses the power to knock all of them out. Something is going to go down here. With Perrin, after his rescue by Elias in the last episode, he now learns more about what being a wolf brother is, and learns a bit about how to talk to the wolves via sendings and visions and all of that. He ends up meeting a fan favorite character, Hopper. Perrin seems to be coming somewhat to terms with who and what he is, which is kind of cool to watch. Matt and Min are on their way out of the tower. They stop at an inn, an undisclosed location. Matt is still losing at dice. Hopefully that changes sometime soon. But Min is set to meet somebody in the attic of that inn to tell her where to take Matt. That was part of her deal with Leandrin. Well, that person ends up being none other than a Shamael who comes to meet her in her dreams. She is clearly terrified and surprised that this is a Shamael that's showing up, but he tells her to bring Matt to Kyrian if she wants him to take away her ability to have the visions. Lastly, for the A plot of the episode, we have Rand and Selene. Their plots pick up in the burnt down remains of Selene's inn from the previous episode that Rant accidentally burned down. Selene says that because the inn needs rebuilt, she's going to take a trip to the countryside and asks Rand to accompany her. He ends up going with her. They share a nice little talk up on the mountains that overlook Kyrian. That night, while they are sleeping, a fade attacks and Rand ends up killing it with the one power. To Selene's seeming surprise, she ends up telling Rand that he is what he is and they go into the hut for some sexy time. While in the hut, apparently Celine is very into BDSM because she is tying Rand to the bed. In the process, she also tells him that she is also a monster and begins channeling in front of him. Now, before she can get far, however, Maureen stabs her with Rand's sword and then slits her throat before freeing Rand. Rand is initially very shocked and lashes out at Moraine, but he realizes that she was right, that that was Lanfear, and then leaves with Moraine. 
The episode ends by focusing on what should be the dead body of Lanfear, but then her eyes blink, showing black flecks floating across her vision and that she is still alive. So yeah, there's a lot to unpack here. So let's start with what I liked in the episode. There were some significant departures in this episode from the main plotline, and while they're all moving towards similar endings, they are nevertheless departures from the book story. Not that we're not already ready for that or haven't already seen them, but some of these were departures in this episode were positive and some were not so much, which I'll get to here in a moment. One of the positives, in my opinion, was aging up Maureen. Her younger sister was Lady Oliver, who is clearly an older woman, making Maureen far older than the 40 years old that she is in the books. I was cool with this, as it gives Maureen a little bit more story, a little bit more background, and I enjoyed the dynamic with her having an older, younger sister, if that makes sense. Lady Oliver herself, played by Lindsay Duncan, who is one of my favorite actresses uh, from Rome. She was great. I, I enjoyed the performance. I liked the character. Lindsay Duncan has always been great, so excellent addition to the cast. I enjoyed watching Maureen meet Loghain and seeing how she had manipulated events to get him there. I'm glad they explained why Loghain was in Kyrian rather than Tarvalon. I'm happy that that wasn't just glossed over. It makes a lot more sense now, so I'm glad they addressed it. The sendings from the wolves I thought were done decently well. It's not how I envisioned it, but I'm also not sure actually how I envisioned it or even how they would do it. It's such a difficult thing to adapt in my opinion. So I thought we got a very good understanding of what it's like to be a wolf brother, how they communicate. So I thought that worked pretty well. It was also nice to see Perrin get some more development time. I enjoyed the time with him and Elias. I'm looking forward to what's next in his arc. Something that I really couldn't say much for earlier in this season. He's just been kind of a dud to me. I liked that Nynaeve actually carried trauma of what happened in the arches with her. You don't live a life, lose everybody that you love, and forget about it really quickly, real or not. She was very realistic in her portrayal of somebody who had just lost a daughter. It was a very visceral and real performance, and I, I loved it. I thought it was great. And how about that conversation she had with Leandrin? That was perfection. Flat out awesome, and I loved all of it. Uh, how much more humanized can they make uh, Leandrin? Honestly, I mentioned this in my last review, but Kate Fleetwood should be up for a Best Supporting Actress Emmy. She has been crazy outstanding this season. It's been incredible acting, some great writing for her character. I've loved almost every scene that Leandrin is in. Kate Fleetwood has been chewing up the scenery here. I thought Leandrin's betrayal was nice too, and it was well executed. It'll be interesting if she takes them as captives to foam rather than as willing participants like in the books. But the cat's out of the bag there. It appears that uh, they are clearly indicating that Leandrin is not exactly uh, on the up and up. But let's talk about Lanfear. I thought the dynamic with Rand and Celine was much better in this episode. She was definitely showing more of her Lanfear and manipulative side, and that was fun to watch. Definitely better executed, in my opinion, than the lovesick puppy stuff from the books. I really don't love the dynamic between Celine and Rand in the books, so it, I, I kind of appreciate this dynamic here pretty well. The look on her face when Rand channeled to kill the Fade was also great. So I will say the reveal that she was Lanfear probably hit the right tone if you are not a book reader and did not know that was coming. I think that probably looked better and was probably a cooler reveal if you didn't know. The last thing I love, though, was the black flecks or the saw that were in her eyes at the very end of the episode. I'm sure most people did not even catch that, but I thought that was really cool to see. So what didn't I like about this episode? Well, there were definitely some things, unfortunately, probably more than the other episodes. Let's start with the land stuff. This just wasn't good to me. I thought it felt unnecessary, frankly, kind of boring, and it was filler to me. For all the things that we've got to cut to adapt a story like this, I hate choices like this that don't seem to add anything but filler to an episode. I don't think we had much development in Leanne as a character from the events of the episode. I actually like slowed down character driven plot lines if it adds growth to a character, but I don't think we got that here. I just think we got Lan having a bunch of conversations hanging out. I don't think we really understand more of who he is in general after the episode. And I have somewhat been waiting for Lan to change in general, but Lan is one of the characters that I just think they've missed on. I know I'm probably in the minority here, but I actually don't want to see stoic Lan from the books. I actually think that would be tropey and boring to see on the screen. Um, I, I love Lan in the books, but I just don't think it would translate that well. I think it'd be kind of boring and again, tropey. I was going to be fine with them giving uh, uh, him a little bit more character or story or some extra actual characterization beyond being stoic, but I don't feel like Lan has any of his own motivations, and I think that's the problem I have. This is the uncrowned King of Malkir, who has a never-ending battle with the Shadow, and that hasn't come through at all. His entire character 
is basically defined through his relationship with Moraine and his attraction to Nynaeve. And I, I think that's a disservice to the character. He's boring, mopey, and he's not the imposing badass on a mission that I'd want to see. I don't mind his emotions. I actually think that stuff's fine. Showing emotion last season at Steppen's death did not bother me. But the lack of any in strong internal motivation apart from Moraine has bothered me. So I, I don't really feel like Lan is a fully fleshed out character, and I feel like that's a shame. I also don't like the vagueness about what is going on with the Bond as well. It feels like a cheap deception to me that's unneeded for drama's sake. They talk about the Bond being gone, but then it's also still there. It just seems like this is all there to mislead us, and it makes this very very strange for these characters who would probably know what's going on to be talking through. They keep talking out of both sides of their mouth. I don't find it consistent. And it's honestly, it just feels like it's adding drama that I don't think they need to tell a compelling story here. Now, I also want to say something that I will preface by saying I completely understand why they made the choice they did. And I probably would have done the same thing in their shoes, but it doesn't change the fact that it's noticeable to me. The wolves are dogs actually that look like wolves. Um, I forget the breed, but it's like a wolf dog or something like that. They are significantly smaller than real wolves and they appear that way on the screen. The reason they're used is obviously they're easier to train than a real wolf would be and they're easier to work with. They're not gonna kill anybody like a wolf might, but they don't have the imposing size. They, they look like the smaller dogs that they are. Yes, in Game of Thrones, they use CGI to make the dire wolves huge, but that was actually, if you've ever seen some of the behind the scenes stuff, that was a significant CGI expense for that show that's why they actually took some of the wolves out of the episodes it would have been very expensive for the number of wolf packs and the amount that the wolves should show up in the show so i know why they use the wolf dogs i do it's just not hitting the right notes to me maybe they could have done some stuff with some forced perspective i don't know but this last thing i'm hoping that it gets explained more but are the forsaken invulnerable now moraine says she couldn't kill lanfear if she wanted to after she had already slit her throat and stabbed her through the heart so are we saying that they can't be killed by any normal means are we going the route that the only way to kill them is through balefire. It's possible that they are replacing the Dark One transmuting bodies with just the Dark One being able to fix the bodies that they have or making them heal from stuff. But I don't like their godlike like that. I liked the Forsaken that they were humans with godlike powers, but still human. Maybe it will make them more compelling, but I was not a huge fan in this episode of Landfear, like popping her eyes back open and being alive. So what did I think overall? The episode to me was more of a miss than a hit. It isn't bad. And I actually think non-readers will probably enjoy this episode a heck of a lot more than I did. That's why I'm going to rate it higher than I would simply for my opinion alone. I think the ending was suspensable. I think the reveals of Leandrin and Lanfear would be pretty compelling if I didn't already know those things were coming. And that's really who this show is for. It's not just for fans of the books. And I did love the Leandrin dialogue with Nynaeve, but the entire land plotline with Alana was just a complete dud to me. I'm going to give the episode a 6 out of 10. What did you think of the episode? Did you love it? Did I get it wrong? Let me know in the comments of the video. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to get more Wheel of Time TV show and book content. That's all I make here on the channel, and there are literally hundreds of videos on the channel all about the Wheel of Time. Over half of you that watch my videos are not subscribed, so consider subscribing to the channel and definitely hit the bell icon so you know when more stuff comes out. Thank you to my patrons for your financial support. I could not do this without you. If you enjoy my content and you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon link in the description of the video. If you like this, you will probably like one of these right here. Thank you for watching and until next time, peace out.